termination port. So you've got your black handle. This is for your black tank. So that's going to be your sewage. And then on the front we have the gray handle. That's for your gray tank. That's going to be your kitchen water, your bath water, all of that. When you are emptying your sewage, you're going to want to pull out the black first. Let that run through. Then pull your gray tank. That'll help flush out your hose. Over here we have the vents for the refrigerator. These can be used to access uh, your appliances if they need repairs. Generally, they're just vents though. <laughs> right here we have your outside shower. And right above that we have the black tank flush. So you can connect a garden hose to this just to help flush out your black tank when you're all done with it. I would suggest using a garden hose, not your drinking water hose for this one. This metal piece right here is the exhaust for your furnace. It does get pretty hot, so make sure to keep any um, small fingers or anything like that away from there. Next here, we have our fresh tank fill. So for this one, you're gonna wanna use a white drinking hose to, do, to fill this up. There is a small vent on the side here. As you're filling it up, you'll hear the water coming out. When the water starts to come out there as well, you know you're full, you can pull the hose out. Beneath that is your city water connection. So this is for when you have a site with full hookups. You're gonna hook up, again, a white drinking hose to that. And you're going to wanna make sure that you have a pressure regulator hooked up as well. Um, most campsites may say they have pressure or proper pressure, but it's better safe than sorry for your unit just to make sure that you do have a pressure regulator to keep everything good. I will also point out underneath here, this is the drain for the fresh water tank. So you'll just turn it, that'll open it up, you can drain all of the water out. Right here you have your hot water tank. So this is just the outside access to it. So this tank can run on either propane or electricity. If you are going to use electricity, there is just a small switch down here. You're going to want to make sure that it is switched to on. If you're using propane, set it to off. These two buttons right here, these are your reset buttons. If you find you're having some problems with it, or if the indicator light inside on the panel that we'll show later is on, just come and press these. It's always a good place to start. Uh, another note at the bottom, here you have your drain. So uh, when you are going to empty your hot water tank to winterize, you're going to want to release the pressure using this up here. Pull out the anode rod to let it drain. This unit does have an anode rod it's about yay long and when you pull it out you might notice that it's starting to corrode that's exactly what it's supposed to do the anode rod uh, is there to make sure that the anode rod is what's getting corroded instead of your actual tank so it can go for a couple of years before you need to replace it as you can see here this is right where your unit will be plugged in um, we do give you guys, I'll just leave that one in there. <laughs> Your unit will come with a sewage hose. It's just stored in the back bumper. The end caps do pop right off and you can pull it out from there. Here we do have a port for solar charge. If that is something that you choose to do for the unit, it's a pretty solid one. Here we go. And if you choose to connect cable or satellite. One note with the spare tire, it comes with a spare tire but the trailer does not come with jacks or uh, the torque wrench. So you will want to double check that you have one in your vehicle and also double check that it's the right size. They might be slightly different. So just double check that before you take your unit out. Alrighty, here we have the rear entry into the bunkhouse. It locks from both sides. Hi, this is Melody with Trailblazer RV. Today we are doing the digital orientation for the 234 BBH Sonic trailer. So we'll start off right in the front here. We've got your power ton jack. Um, the power jack is always powered with the battery, so the on switch is simply for the light on the front. Here we've got the button for retracting and for extending. Pretty simple. Behind here we've got our dual propane tanks. There is an access panel on the front if you will need to just take a peek in there. We're going to turn it off. As you can see it's a pretty snug fit. 
So here you've got your dual propane tanks, uh, 20 pound tanks, they are full. And so we're just gonna start opening them, open them fairly slow and make sure you open it all the way. In between we have the dual regulator. So what this will do, uh, there's an arrow on the front here pointing to your primary tank. As soon as that tank is depleted, the sight glass in the front here will turn red and it will automatically start using from your secondary tank. The, the arrow won't point on its own so you just manually want to flip that once you see the red. This will allow you to remove your primary tank without having to shut down any of your system, refill it and bring it back. Now if we move behind, we have your battery. So um, with these batteries, they are the wet cell batteries so you, they do have a bit of maintenance. You're going to want to check that the cells stay full of fluid at all times. So just check a couple times a year. And um, if they are starting to run low on any fluid, just top them up with distilled water and make sure you give the battery a good charge. Here you've got your positive running to the positive, your negative to the negative. Uh, these smaller wires here, these are for the solar panel. And here's the fuse for the solar panel, just off the positive side. Now we'll move around to the side. Okay, so here you have your front pass-through storage. On this side, right in here, we have plug-ins for your unit. So this is a 30 amp RV. We do include the 15 amp adapter, just in case your campground or wherever you're parked doesn't have access to 30 amp. It's a pretty snug fit in here. You'll get it on when you need it. Here I will also note the stabilizer jacks. So the stabilizer jacks are for stabilizing your unit. They're not used for leveling it. Uh, when it comes to leveling your unit, you're going to want to use your power tongue jack for front and back leveling, and you're going to use tire chocks for side to side. Once you are all leveled, you can bring your stabilizer jacks down just till they're nice and snug with the ground to keep you solid. Uh, right up here is the microwave vent. There are some tabs just inside here. You're going to pull those out. As you can see, it is open right now. You're going to open that once you're parked. While you're traveling, you're going to want to click that closed. And now if we go down here, we have an exterior plug-in, another cable hookout, and for the running gear. So you've got dual axles here. The tires are 50 PSI. You're always gonna wanna keep them running at 50 PSI. It wouldn't hurt to just double check quick before you head out anywhere. Uh, these are also uh, easy grease. So you're able to just take a grease gun in there and add some grease to the wheel bearings. Uh, if you're not doing that, we recommend to replace the bearings every year. If you're going to be using the easy grease, adding some grease yourself, you can prolong these as long as three to five years, as long as you're keeping up with it really well. The lug nuts are torqued to 100 foot-pounds. You're gonna wanna just check that once in a while. Okay, now we'll head inside. So I'm just gonna hook the door open. Just the catch on the back keeps it nice and firm. Okay. First thing we'll note, we'll turn the lights on inside. That's just on the panel here. First light on the right-hand side is for the interior second light does the exterior lights and this blue light turns on the lights and on the awning roller. So I will start to bring out the awning a little bit. We're in a bit of a tight space so this will demonstrate that the awning doesn't always have to be fully pulled out. If need be you can only bring it out as far as you have space. It's absolutely fine. So we'll just leave it there. Great thing about this awning, with these buttons here, you can actually adjust the height of your awning. It's adjustable on both sides independently. While the awning is recommended more for sun and not so much for rain, if you do have a light rain coming down and you don't want to bring it in, we definitely recommend that you take one side and lower it just a little bit so that you ensure that the rain runs off. So also right in here we have the slide out button. So we're going to bring that out right now. 
So we'll know that it's fully out when we can see that it's out and we'll also hear a slight ratcheting and that's when you're gonna to wanna to let go of the button. Right there, that is out. So now we've got the whole unit here. Um, you've got your Murphy bed here. Uh, you're just gonna fold down the couch, undo the latch and fold the bed down. You've got your smoke detector, just like a Smith standard smoke detector in your house, runs on batteries. It'll chirp when the batteries are low now down here we have your entertainment system it's dvd player radio it's a pretty simple system to use one thing we do like to note is your unit comes with interior and exterior speakers so zone one is inside zone two is outside just make sure if you're starting a movie at night that you make sure that it's not set to zone two at all otherwise all of your neighbors get to hear your movie too <laughs> And even further down here, we have our converter panel. So this is where all your fuses are. This unit is 15 and 40 amp fuses. Um, it doesn't hurt to keep a few extras on hand. Sometimes they do blow. It's just the way it is. <laughs> now we'll move on to the kitchen. So you've got your standard hood. You've got the light. You've got the fan. You've got your stove top. So this doesn't come with an igniter automatically. You will want to keep a barbecue lighter on, um, just like a normal one. Push, turn, light. Uh, we can hear the propane coming through right now. We do recommend if it's uh, if you're running all, all new propane or if you changed something out recently, just bleed it through the stove a little bit. Make sure you get any air out just to be safe. Your sink with your sink cover. Uh, we do recommend that you take the sink cover off to travel. Um, just store it anywhere in your unit that it's not going to move around too much just because it's not super secure on top. It's more used just to give you some more counter space when you're working. So we'll step here and now we have your furnace. So uh, this furnace you'll hear an audible click when it's off versus when it's on. We'll demonstrate turning it on so we'll just crank it right up. So you hear the fans click on right away. It'll, but you'll notice that it's blowing cold air right now. Just give it one second and then we'll hear the pilot light and we'll, it'll start blowing warm. There we go. So the pilot's lit. Now it's gonna blow warmer air. And the same thing will happen in reverse when we shut it off. So again, make sure you push it all the way till you hear that audible click. There we go. So right away the pilot went off but it'll take a minute for the fan to turn off. It's just gonna purge the system out real quick. And looking down here. So here you've got your combination LPCO detector. So this will actually uh, indicate three things in your unit. The first thing is gonna be if you have a propane leak. Uh, if there's propane present, it will alarm. Uh, quite often with propane, you'll smell it before the alarm has a chance to go off. Uh, the other thing it will do is uh, carbon monoxide it will alarm you to too much carbon monoxide in the air. Third thing it will do, um, because it is hardwired into your unit, it will chirp if your voltage gets too low. So if your batteries are about to run out, it'll chirp similar in the way that a smoke detector would chirp. So that just lets you know that you've gotta plug your batteries in, get a little bit more going on there. <laughs> now for your fridge, if this one is a very simple system. You've got your on button here. Uh, it's an automatic one, so it will pull from electricity first. If you're not plugged in, then it will run on propane. So just hold the button to turn it off. Here you've got your solar panel, uh, the panel for your solar panel. Um, it will show you what the charge is sitting at. Um, so there you go, you've got your information there. So just keep an eye on that one as you go. And uh, now into the bathroom. Okay, so I'll turn the light on. So a couple things to note here. So this unit is equipped with uh, tank heaters. It's just that switch that'll turn those on, the heating pads on your tank. They do pull quite a bit of energy, so we don't recommend using it unless you are getting into those cooler temperatures where you'll need that. And here you've got your monitor panel. So it's gonna show you your battery, which is full, your fresh water tank is full, black water tank is full, and your gray is empty. Those are just full from our testing right now. And if you are hooked, if you are using your um, your water, your fresh water tank, you're not hooked up to uh, site at all. You're going to want to turn on your water pump 
So that's just gonna make sure you get their pressure throughout the unit. Now you've got both of your switches here for the water heater, one for gas, one for electric. Again, if you're using electric, make sure that the flip, the switch is flipped outside as well. With the water heater, just like the furnace, when you turn it on, you're gonna have to wait a couple seconds till you hear the pilot light, and then it'll start going. This light uh, is an indicator light, just letting you know that if things aren't quite right. So right now it's on because the tank is empty. So if your tank starts to overheat at all, usually because it's turned on empty, oh, actually looks like we're full, so it, it went right off. If it stays on, first thing to do, check is if your tank is empty. Second thing, there's those two reset buttons. Press those and, and go from there. The third thing in the bathroom is your GFI outlet. You'll recognize that it's similar to what you have in your bathroom at home. Uh, the only difference between that one and the one in your RV is that the one in your RV is actually going to be wired in series with several other outlets throughout your RV. So if you notice that you have an outlet that's not working for some reason, you're plugged in, just come into the bathroom, hit reset, you should be all good to go from there. Uh, the next thing to note is with the toilet. So with the toilet, whenever you're using your chemical, um, you're going to want to make sure that you flush everything out, close all your valves before you put your chemical in. Um, you doesn't matter if you're using liquid powder or the tablets. When you use it though, you're going to want to hold the pedal about halfway down. That'll get the toilet bowl to fill. And then all the way down to flush. All of the chemicals, no matter what form you use, are activated by water. So you're going to need to do that. Okay. Here you have the AC unit. It's uh, pretty straightforward. You've got your heat dial and you've got your fan dial. Uh, your This unit you are able to do just fan without the AC on. So turn, uh, if we look on the side here, we've got low fan or the other side we've got low high cool, low cool. That's just telling you if it's using the air conditioning or just the fan. All right. Now in the back here, you've got this, uh, the bed that lifts up, just the clasps just go right into the corner there. That gives you some more space for your dinette. And we're just gonna pull these cushions out here. Underneath this dinette seat, you've got the interior access to your hot water tank. So this is your hot water heater right here. Uh, the biggest thing to note here is you got both of your valves so these are most important when you're winterizing your unit. When you winterize your unit, you're gonna to wanna to bypass the hot water heater. So you're gonna make sure everything is drained out. You're gonna close both of these valves and then you're going to do your winterizing process. And the reverse goes for that when you de-winterize in the springtime. All right. So I think that about covers it for the orientation on this unit. Oh, actually, also underneath here is our emergency exit. I'm just going to pull the curtains to the side. So how this one works, you have your lever on the side here. You're going to pop it up. It can be a bit tight, so we definitely recommend that you try this a few times as soon as you bring your unit home, just to make sure that you've got the hang of it. So you're going to pop that up and wedge the window open. It's a little bit easier without the table here. There we go. That first stick after the fresh clean. So um, once it's open, you can just leave it wedged open. Then you can have some venting back here. Um, for the emergency exit use, there's a red tab on the screen. You will pull that and then the screen will pop open. The, the window will fully hinge and it's the proper exit for you. So after that, that would conclude the orientation here on 